take stock of what we have done uh, so far, especially with respect to uh, limit theorems uh, for extremes, uh, and uh, to study uh, a general question. So, uh, so imagine that uh, we have a system that we are interested in, uh, and we know that this system is optimizing something. So there is a function that, uh, 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 that is maximized uh, by this system. Okay, so th this system has a certain uh, set of variables, S, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and there is a function U uh, that uh, is going to be maximized. So, However, uh, the problem is that uh, not all these functions uh, are known, not all, the, all these variables are known, so there is a part of them uh, which are known and another part uh, which is uh, unknown, okay? And this is essentially what happens uh, in every situation uh, where uh, uh, you want to model a system that is optimizing. And uh, at the same time, uh, the, uh, the function that is going to be optimized, uh, well, of course, we can only know this function with respect to the known variables. So there will be a part uh, which is uh, uh, known, and another part uh, that I call V, which will depend on unknown variables, but also on the known variables. So I write it in this way. Okay, and the way you can think uh, about this uh, U of S uh, is essentially as the expected value of the function that is being optimized uh, if you uh, fix uh, the variables, the known variables. Okay, but you should think uh, about this expected value as being taken over a probability that uh, reflects. Uh, the state of knowledge that is whatever you know about uh, uh, your system. So uh, this means uh, that uh, if this is the system you are interested in, uh, then uh, uh, the model, your model of this system will be uh, essentially a model where you can uh, approximate this function by the u of s and, uh, and you can study this ma the maximization problem on this uh, other function here and the question is uh, uh, how I mean how are these two problems related okay so in particular um, uh, you can uh, you can look uh, at what is the observable behavior of, uh, of the system and this is essentially given by uh, the maximum on the known variables okay so this will be given by the maximum of, of the say is the what maximizes the arg max on the variables s of the maximum of the uh, unknown variables of the function u of s that depends on both. Okay. So the real question that uh, uh, we are going to ask uh, is: uh, so this is an observable behavior. What is the uh, predicted behavior? is, uh, uh, I will call it S, you know, it's just the arg of the max what maximizes the known part of, of, this, of this function, okay? So the real question that uh, I'm going to ask uh, is what is the probability that uh, uh, the actual behavior is equal to the uh, predicted one, okay? 
So this is uh, uh, this is uh, the main question that uh, we will deal with. No? Okay. And uh, well, you could say, well, uh, I, I don't know uh, really very much about this problem. So it is surprising that uh, we can give an answer to this question with a very, uh, even if we know very little about uh, uh, this system. Okay. In particular, I want to study the situation where uh, uh, we really. I mean, these are really uh, unknown uh, variables. So essentially, we, can, we do not know their uh, value. But what we can assume is that we know uh, their distribution. So uh, we are going to assume that uh, these uh, variables uh, here are uh, IID Uh, distributed from a certain probability distribution P of D. And why, uh, why they are independent? Because uh, if they were not independent, I should know how they depend on each other. So this is, uh, if you want, uh, a, an assumption of maximal ignorance. And uh, identical also is because uh, when, uh, if they had a uh, different distribution, then uh, I should uh, uh, write down uh, how uh, I, I should know how they they differ, but if I don't know, uh, I mean the, the assumption that this has an identical this is, uh, the same distribution for all values of s, uh, which is for all values of the known and unknown variables, then uh, this is uh, uh, a a. a, a uh, encodes uh, a state of maximal ignorance. Okay, so the only no thing I know is that uh, uh, this probability distribution, in particular, I'm going to assume uh, that. Uh, um, uh, so let me <coughs> write it here. I'm going to assume uh, this is for all s. Huh? And I'm going to assume that the probability that V of S and S is uh, uh, larger than V is equal to the exponential minus V to the gamma, okay, with uh, V which is positive, okay? All these V's are positive and, uh, and they have this uh, uh, cumulative distribution, okay? Now, uh, the, uh, what I want to show is that uh, we can write down uh, 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 an expression for this probability. Why? Because the probability at S star is equal to S, any S, okay, in general, is equal uh, to the probability that, uh, uh, say, uh, U of S, uh, uh, plus the max of S of V of S and S is larger or equal than U of S prime plus V plus the max of S of V of S, S prime for all S prime different than S. Okay. Now, uh, so if S star is what solves this problem, then uh, it should be true that uh, uh, this uh, U of S plus the max of this should be larger than any other uh, value that this thing can take for any different S prime. Okay, now the uh, in order to make uh, uh, some progress, uh, we can observe that uh, this uh, max on uh, V of S and S prime actually, uh, um, so these are uh, variables that I don't know, 
and the distribution is given by that. But uh, uh, quite generally, uh, I can apply down, uh, uh, I can use extreme value theory to apply uh, down what is the distribution of this object. The distribution of this object uh, uh, will be, so this object by the extreme value theory will be, uh, say, A uh, will be a constant plus another constant times uh, some uh, random variable that now depends on uh, uh, this variable here. Sorry, uh, my notation is that uh, this should be like this. So it should depend on the known variables. Okay, and this A and B are given by uh, the extreme value theory. Uh, what is the distribution of uh, this eta? Uh, the distribution of uh, the eta S is given by the um, uh, uh, extreme value theory. And in this case, for this distribution here, uh, this is given by the gamma distribution. Okay, very good. So, so now, uh, in order to know what this A and B are, uh, let me go back uh, uh, to this, but uh, say the assumption here is that this sum, this maximum, runs over a very large number of terms. So the number of values that S can take is, uh, is very, very large. Okay. So then uh, you see that uh, uh, I can write this probability as uh, the probability that uh, 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 what u s plus a plus b times eta s is larger or equal to u s prime plus a eta s prime for all s prime b times s. And uh, well, this uh, probability will clearly not depend on A. And, uh, and also, uh, you can see that uh, uh, this is, uh, um, can be rewritten as a probability that uh, eta S prime be less or equal than uh, uh, eta S plus, uh, let me call this uh, uh, a constant, uh, uh, which I call uh, delta, okay, where this uh, delta is going to be uh, u of s minus u of s prime divided by b, okay? Now, uh, this is this must be true for all S prime different than S. Okay. Now, because I know the distribution of these two uh, random variables, which is uh, uh, a gamble, and because uh, the variables that are involved uh, in the maximization for a certain S are independent uh, of the variable that are uh, involved in the maximization for a different uh, S-bar, then these two are independent uh, and identically distributed uh, uh, random variables with a common distribution which is given by this. Okay, and uh, then this means uh, that I can write, uh, let me write it up here, I can write uh, this, uh, 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 probability explicitly by taking an integral on all values of eta s of this, taking the uh, expected value of uh, its distribution, which is the gamma distribution, and then uh, uh, imposing the condition that for all s different than s prime, this uh, eta s prime must be less or equal to this. And this is precisely given by this formula. So uh, this uh, should be the product of uh, s prime different than s of e to the minus uh, eta s uh, plus uh, two, uh, 
sorry, e to the minus e to the minus eta s uh, minus this delta. And uh, of course, uh, so this delta uh, depends on s and s prime. And uh, so now you see that uh, well, this integral looks like a little bit uh, uh, awful, but uh, it actually simplifies quite a lot. If you take, uh, uh, if you uh, substitute uh, uh, here z equal z e to the minus eta s. Okay, because then. Uh, the e, so this e to the minus eta s times d eta is just this z and z goes from 0 to infinity and then I have e to the minus z which is this and this product I can put it on uh, the uh, on the exponential as a sum okay then I have minus z times the sum on s prime different than s of the exponential minus delta s and s prime. Okay, so this is just uh, an exponential integral. So you see that this can be written as just uh, uh, one plus this. And this, uh, uh, this, uh, this integral can be done uh, uh, straightforwardly. And uh, this is just uh, one divided by 1 plus the sum of s prime different than s of this e to the minus this delta ok ok so uh, you see that uh, uh, then uh, we have an explicit uh, form of this probability in terms of uh, uh, things that uh, we know. So if I uh, rewrite the expression of delta here, then uh, you can check that this becomes uh, e to the uh, uh, u of s divided by b. Uh, actually, let me write it uh, as uh, beta times u of s divided by sum over s prime into the beta times u of s prime where this beta is now 1 over uh, b ok is uh, 1 over b ok now this uh, 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 formula here is uh, uh, it's a very uh, uh, it's a formula that you will see very often and uh, it is called in different ways in different disciplines so so this is uh, if uh, uh, this uh, u is uh, minus the Hamiltonian of a physical system then this is called the Gibbs Boltzmann distribution Uh, if uh, instead uh, you are interested, you are an economist and, uh, or you are a statistician and uh, you want to use this as a, a, a model uh, for a probability distribution, then uh, this general class of model is called uh, uh, logit model. And, uh, but you see that uh, this general form of uh, a probability distribution comes out uh, quite generally from uh, this broad class of problems. Okay. Now, uh, this distribution depends on one parameter, which is b, and this parameter is related to b, which is, uh, in this case, uh, uh, related to uh, the fluctuations of uh, uh, this, uh, the maximum, okay, the parameter b in extreme value theory, okay. 
So uh, now let us uh, uh, be more specific and let's ask uh, what is this B. So let us imagine that uh, uh, the known variables, so this uh, uh, um, let us imagine that uh, uh, these are very big systems. So uh, the known variables uh, is a sequence of uh, n variables with si, which is equal to plus or minus 1. And then uh, is very large. So and uh, the unknown variables are also uh, a, a sequence of uh, m binary random variables, which take uh, a value plus or minus one. And also m uh, is also very large. And uh, and we are going to study in particular uh, the situation where uh, uh, n uh, m divided by n is, uh, uh, is of order 1. Okay? Now, um, so in this case, uh, when you do this maximum, the number of variables on which you take the maximum is 2 to the m. Okay? And if you go back uh, to uh, the uh, to your notes uh, and uh, see what is the value of uh, uh, b for this probability distribution depends on depending on the number of variables. Then you find that this beta has the form of uh, m times log two to the one minus one over gamma. Okay, so this is also. Uh, a very interesting uh, 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 result because it tells you that uh, uh, it tells you that uh, uh, when the number of variables uh, m uh, that you don't know go to infinity, this parameter uh, beta. Uh, Beta also goes to infinity if gamma is larger than 1. If gamma is larger than 1, then 1 over gamma is less than 1, then this is a positive power of m. So beta goes to infinity when you don't know uh, a lot of uh, things about this problem. And interestingly, you see that uh, then if beta goes to infinity, then this probability distribution becomes uh, more and more picked uh, around uh, the maximum value of uh, u of s, uh, which is essentially given by u of s zero. So, uh, in this situation, then uh, we expect uh, that in this limit, uh, the probability that s star is equal to s zero uh, will converge to one as the number of things that you don't know uh, goes to infinity, okay? If instead, uh, uh, if instead uh, uh, in the same limit, uh, you will have that beta goes to zero if gamma is less than one, because then one over gamma is larger than one, and this is a negative power of m, okay? Then, uh, when gamma is less than 1, uh, we will have that this beta is going to go to 0. So this probability distribution is going to be a constant uh, and uh, it's going to be uh, essentially uh, equal to uh, 1 over 2 to the m, the number of states, and uh, which means it's going to go to 0 as m goes to infinity. So you see that uh, uh, if you have a system uh, uh, of which you know that you only partially know what is uh, uh, 
crucial is what is the distribution of the uh, um, part of the uh, function that is optimized with respect to, uh, th that you don't know, with respect to the variables that you don't know. Because uh, if this has a, a distribution like this one with a gamma less than one, then uh, uh, essentially the more you don't know, the less your prediction are going to be, uh, uh, the less you are going to be uh, able to, uh, understand, uh, to, to, to match the behavior of the system with your model. Okay? Instead, if uh, gamma is larger than 1, so for example, uh, uh, this includes, for example, the, uh, the Gaussian. So the Gaussian would have gamma equal to 2, in the sense that the tail of the distribution would go as e to the minus uh, x squared. Then uh, if gamma is larger than 2, then the more you don't know, the better it is. Okay? Uh, the more you, uh, your, your model can be uh, uh, predictive. Okay? So we are going to see that this distinction between uh, uh, distribution uh, uh, which fall off faster than an exponential, that we are going to go call uh, uh, distribution with thin tails, and uh, distribution uh, which go uh, fall off slower than an exponential, then uh, we are going to call uh, uh, distribution with fat tails is uh, um, it's a quite important one. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, actually, uh, you can also be uh, a bit uh, more specific uh, with respect to this. Uh, if you uh, make an assumption on uh, the model, um, if you make an assumption on what uh, this function u of s is, okay? So uh, a typical assumption that you can make is that uh, uh, so u of s is also a random uh, function drawn from uh, uh, a certain distribution. And in particular, you can say, um, uh, but what is relevant is just to uh, specify what is the number of states such that this uh, uh, u of s is less than a given, uh, uh, so it is sorry, it's larger or equal than a given value u. And this will be the total number of. Uh, uh, states, which is 2 to the n in this case, uh, because we are assuming that these are n binary variables, times uh, the probability, and we can uh, assume uh, the same uh, uh, distribution as, uh, uh, as for the unknown uh, uh, part of, uh, of, of, of the optimi optimized function. Okay, so if, uh, if you make uh, this assumption, then uh, you can do all the calculations. I'm not going to uh, discuss them here, but it's essentially uh, not much uh, more uh, complex than uh, a subtle point calculation. And uh, essentially you can find uh, that uh, uh, as a function of the... Uh, ratio between uh, the number of variables that you know and the number of variables that you don't know, um, uh, so you, um, so generally you will find that the probability that S star is equal to S0 is uh, uh, goes asymptotically as uh, e to the minus n times a constant. And uh, what you find is that uh, when uh, <coughs> gamma is uh, larger than 1, uh, this gamma, this sigma, 
this constant here is uh, positive uh, when you don't know uh, few things, uh, but when you don't know many things, uh, when n is larger than uh, n, so then uh, this sigma is going to be equal to zero, which means that uh, here your probability that s star is equal to s zero is essentially uh, of order one. So in this region, uh, uh, you can have a prediction, and uh, whether, whereas in this region, this probability uh, is going to be exponentially small. It's going to go to zero as your system goes to infinity. When you, uh, this is what happens uh, for gamma larger than one, if you take uh, gamma less than one, you have the opposite uh, behavior. So for, uh, say, gamma less than one, you have the opposite behavior, where essentially, if you are less than a critical point, uh, then uh, the sigma is equal to zero, so you can make predictions in this region. But then, uh, when uh, m becomes larger than m, uh, the critical value of m, then your sigma uh, jumps to a finite value. And this discontinuity, in this case, uh, is... Uh, 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 so this transition is continuous for gamma larger than 1, but is discontinuous for gamma uh, less than 1. Okay? And um, what you can also uh, see, I mean, from this picture is that essentially the point uh, where gamma is exactly equal to 1 is a very special point. It has very special properties that are essentially uh, related to uh, systems of this type that, however, uh, learn uh, from their environment, okay? But this goes beyond uh, uh, the points I wanted to make uh, here. What I wanted to uh, highlight here is that already uh, by using uh, uh, what we have learned so far, you can uh, get a general broad picture of uh, um, uh, what are the key elements uh, that allows your model uh, to be uh, predictive.